viewers. We are back. All right. Properly. And yes, yes I see the version number is completely insane. It is. I just want to bring that up. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six nines and a C. Mm. Yeah, I'm 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 doing it on I'm keeping track myself based on the number of nines. Yeah. Involved. Yep. I have like every version of Better Than Wolves for the last I don't know, probably about four or five months of release on my multi MC. And it's right, gotten right. to the point it's hard to tell them apart at a glance. <laughs> so I want to thank you for that. Uh, I'm just I'm just having some fun with people considering we're getting close to the end. Oh right? yeah, yeah. And and I've always done done little things like that. Like it, it's just kind of indicative of the the playful spirit I do a lot of this in, you know. Right, right. And I enjoy it. I enjoy it. I just have to yeah. find a reason to bitch, you know. <laughs> what would Minecraft be without someone bitching? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna slab up our doorway here. Well, and plus for me too, like, you know, you you've heard me go on before about how much I hate kind of like this whole arbitrary trend as as to what is an alpha, what is a beta, what is a release version. You oh, know, yeah. In, oh, yeah. In various games, Minecraft included. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a bit of a... Some of the stuff that I do with version numbers is a bit of a poke at that as well. It's like, you know, it's all arbitrary, man. You exactly. Know? <laughs> I enjoy it. I really do. <laughs> I think I'm going to actually start building us a bit of a structure here. So a structure? Have... Yeah. Ooh. Feeling pretty rich. I mean, we could, like, have a door or something. I know. Wow. We're in the big leagues now. So there this is go. success. Mm. It's a good feeling. And I will point out once again to the viewers that, like, Icy and I are hardly paying any attention here, and we are not running into any trouble. Yep. So a little haha -ha noob to... <laughs> <laughs> to everyone to else. <laughs> my let's play. <laughs> uh. Well, no, I totally understand though what what you must go through when when recording those let's plays because I know I am not used to. Did we just speaking... completely in case? Yes, yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's certainly safe now. <laughs> Excellent. No one enters. No one leaves. There we go. I'm gonna make us a door. <laughs> Actually, I need some more wood. Ooh, a door. Yeah. Maybe we can uh, put a shrubbery next to the door and another shrubbery on the other side and have a little path running down the middle. That'll protect us from knights and witches. <laughs> uh. Yeah. I, I enjoy my position within the Better Than Wolves community as one of the longer-running Let's Plays and one of the most failure-filled Let's Plays. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it, it's actually great for me because I've been primarily focused on balancing the early game and that kind of thing to, as, for a while now. Yep. And I'm almost guaranteed every every time I watch one of your videos, I'm going to get to see something in the early game. <laughs> yup. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, like, between my two Let's Plays, I have, you know, Iceopolis, which is my yeah. continuing early game. Right. I can't get out of early game. <laughs> and then I have Better Than I See, which, you know, was before all the early game changes, so I'm pretty well advanced. Yeah. I am having a lot more fun with Iceopolis. Like, I mean, there's... No uh, wait, more... which one is Iceopolis? Uh, the early game one. I'm having Man, a those names lot... constantly confuse me. Yeah, I know. I get a little confused by them sometimes, <laughs> too. <laughs> but, like, um, just the early game play is just really enjoy like moment to moment enjoyable the late game play you know i have moments where it's like okay that was awesome i'm you know there's a lot of really good moments of you know just feeling real accomplished yeah with uh what happened but just mm -hmm. moment to moment play the early game is the king well one of the things about that though too because i i end up feeling the same way like i've i i enjoy hardcore respawning a lot of times in my world now uh, because mm -hmm. I got another taste of that early game. But I think one of the things about that is there's still a certain novelty factor there as well. Right, right. You know, because people have been playing the late game for so long now and better than Wolves that the a lot of the early game stuff really is the new content now, you know? Exactly. So it's a lot of fun fun to go through it as, as well. And ultimately, all that early game struggle really adds up to enhance the sense of accomplishment in the long oh, run yeah. you know, when oh, you get yeah. to the late game stuff. Every time I make an iron pick, I feel real proud of myself for the 20 yeah. minutes I have it before I die. I feel real uh, good. I hear that. 
Now, hopefully now too, once once I get the uh, hardcore villagers completed, it'll it'll help flesh out the uh, the middle game a little more too. I am really excited about that. Yeah, I me wait too. To see the changes. And well, it's really I get to experience the it completely fresh since I killed all my villagers. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Because I, uh, I dragged them down from my old cheaty-ass um, infinite villager farm. Okay. Uh, I dragged them down, put the good ones in those little cubbies, and killed all the rest. And then, Dude, uh, how did this pig survive? I don't... It's a magic pig. Man, I'm, I'm tempted to keep him alive just as a, as a testament to, to his struggle. <laughs> Our good luck charm. <laughs> this pig is like if my hero. If he can survive, we can do it. Ah, screw it. He'll be tasty. Yep. <laughs> and he only took one hit, so he obviously has been abused the past few nights. <laughs> Warrior pig over there. Have you see, yet to see an animal go running by with a squid on it? I have not seen that yet. Dude, that is like one of the best moments in Better Than Wolves ever. <laughs> I cannot wait. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure I blew whatever I was drinking through my nose when I first saw that as I was working on them. <laughs> it was just so awesome. Like, you see a cow go running by in a panic with a squid atop and it's just like total chaos that's pretty phenomenal <laughs> i have to say that, that that's pretty awesome <laughs> it really ups the the chaos factor at night <laughs> I, I, I and of course the squid can't survive on land so once it manages to kill the cow it's doomed <laughs> it's ultimately doomed it was like i was even playing i was playing a few days ago and i was wandering through some planes and just found an ink sack, like, randomly lying in the middle of the planes. <laughs> and I just instantly cracked up laughing because, like, you instantly know what happened there, you know? Like, That's... there was this whole this whole drama of the natural world that had unfolded in this location. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, like, speaking of the whole, the natural world's drama, that is one of, I think, the stronger features of Better Than Wolves now. It's... Yeah. I... I agree 100%, and it's one of the things that I really want to... I want to expand upon with uh, Return to Home. It, it's become one of my favorite design trends and Better Than Wolves is kind of the, uh, I think somebody called it hardcore ecology at one point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just the world, like it makes me feel like the invader and I really love it. Yeah, exactly. Um, I pointed that out with, uh, it was the changes to Hunger where I start, first started getting that feeling and then Darkness definitely strengthened it where mm -hmm. I no longer feel like, you know, in Minecraft I'm so used to feeling like the world is mine. Yep. And I'm being, you know, invaded by mobs. And in Better Than Wolves, it is the exact opposite feeling. And yep. with the changes the... to things like wolves and, you know, mobs attacking passive mobs, it just feels... I always feel like a destructive force on everything now. Yeah, yeah. Well, and and I think what's important, too, is you don't necessarily feel like the hero. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you are the most powerful thing in the environment at all times. Like, you can become the most powerful thing in the environment by right, far, but right. that, that's based on your own actions, right? And um, it, it actually relates to something that I've been saying for many years, um, and which is my personal preference in game design. Um, like, the way I used to put it is that if I'm going to play a Star Wars game, um, I don't want to be Luke Skywalker. I want to be some random guy in an X-Wing. Right. That's thrown into the Battle of the Death Star. Right, because it's that kind of element that I'm mentioning here about, well, you're not the hero. Like, you're... Just as you come into the game, you're rather insignificant, right? Right. You're just like this, this foreign element that's been thrown into this world that feels like it already exists, and you're not predestined by fate to become like the most powerful thing in the universe like the only thing that will accomplish that is True, right? your own actions right <laughs> so that's kind of what i was saying about the the star wars game analogy is that a lot of games will immediately throw you into the role of the hero like you are luke skywalker right from the start mm -hmm. you're more powerful than anything else you have a big sign hanging over your head saying i am the player <laughs> right? right exactly <laughs> and i am master of this world um and i've always found it way more interesting when games take the opposite approach and just like okay you're a nobody here you go figure things out <laughs> yeah exactly you know? um i remember one of the favorite games of my youth was uh the original red baron I don't know if you ever played it. I have not. Uh, actually, I don't know if it was the original Red Baron. Anyway, it was this like 
3D uh, flight simulator, World War One flight simulator in the days of like the 386 computer, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And the really cool thing about this was that um, nice little trick. I see if you didn't know it, just put a dirt block in front of the door and you're all set. Oh, okay. It's kind of like pushing furniture in front of a door or something to, to barricade <laughs> I like it. it. Uh, do you have our coal? Uh, you're not going to burn the coal, are you? I no, 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 no. My okay, because thought... I'm, I'm going to have to get some squid if, if you do. <laughs> My thought was there is a <laughs> surface cave this way. So I was going to yeah, start I do have the coal. collecting uh, tr uh, cobble by mining this way and eventually break into that to give us a base of operations. Yeah, we really should start digging downwards as per our earlier conversation. And here you go, torches. Thank you, good sir. And I'll see you forth a few more. Uh... <laughs> I'm going to start collecting this iron while you're at that. Sounds good. But the Red Baron thing. Yeah, yeah. So it was a, um, a very primitive 3D flight simulator. Um, you know, like most people today would hurl chunks if they ever saw the graphics. Mm -hmm. But one of the really cool aspects of that that kind of clued me into the whole Luke Skywalker thing um, was that in that game, you just started as a rookie World War II pilot. Right. Okay. And the game basically had a big map of the Western Front in Europe. Um, and you'd be assigned missions, and you'd take out your World War One fighter, and you were a frigging nobody. Right, and you could go out on a mission and not encounter any enemy planes. You could go out on a mission and randomly run into the Baron von Richhofen and get get your ass kicked all over the place. Huh. Right, but it really had that sense of you are nobody, and anything that you accomplish, it's on you entirely. Right, and the beautiful thing about that is, in not being Luke Skywalker. Anything you do accomplish is all the more gratifying, right? Right. Because now it's not like, you know, it's it's expected that Luke Skywalker is going to blow up the Death Star, right? But if you're some random dude in the X-Wing and you manage to pull it off, like, you're going to be jumping up and down in a way that you would never get otherwise. Exactly, right? exactly. So, to me, anyway, being a nobody um, within a, or initially being a nobody within a game and having to work your way up from there, um, makes for some of the most satisfying gaming of all. Yeah, I can really get behind that. But it, it's kind of, un, it's something you rarely, rarely see. Like, most games just typecast you as the hero, you know, inevitably, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, I got, um, I think my feelings were basically exactly that, just not in those words, you know? It's this... Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I really enjoy that. Yeah. It's, uh... Well, it, it makes for a very different experience. Mm -hmm. and, you know, there, there is some merit to the hero approach, you know, like, uh... I think in terms of mass market, like, especially if you're trying to appeal to, to teenage kids or whatever... Right. Um... You know, then making them into the hero is probably the surest way to, you know, success. Move copies. <laughs> kind of thing. Like, I don't think it's everybody that wants to go through that kind of, you know, working your way up from nothing kind of approach. Just like, it's not everybody that wants to play some, but something like Better Than Wolves. Exactly. You know? hmm. But in, in terms of overall design, it's definitely my preference and, and what I prefer to work on, you know. Yeah. It's nice seeing like the, this you know, dude, the logic you should probably behind just, decisions. What's up? Uh, you should probably just dig at a forty-five degree angle, and we can make some stairs, man. It'll be it'll be a lot easier. That's true. I always forget about like <laughs> stairs and their existence. Yeah, I always I always make stairs generally out of wood, actually, because it's a right. it's a relatively cheap early game material. Ooh, I get really excited when I see dirt while mining. Cause it's like sweet. I get to save my pick for a bit. Yeah. Oh, more iron. Well, and plus dirt is just so useful in the early game, too. Oh, yeah. I, I like a nice creeper. I'm actually digging out the off. dirt in our ceiling as we as we speak <laughs> right now to get some more. Found a bit more iron over here, which is nice. I'm going to slab up that um, uh, your stairway for you. Oh, I'll have to chop off a bit more as well. <laughs> okay. Because we'll bump our heads and not be able to continue. I'm hearing a lot of zombies. So I assume I'm getting somewhat close. 
the switch to like sixth shanks i am now stuck mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, shit. I, I broke all my picks <laughs> uh i got one hold on thank Sorry you about that. it's all right the switch to like the finer shanks is it it makes you much more aware and i, I enjoy that of just how yeah. fast you're losing hunger yeah absolutely well i've i've kind of made a number of little little subtle changes to try to pe make people more aware of what's going on with hunger mm -hmm. because it's so useless in vanilla right right that people right. just aren't used to paying attention to it um so like i mentioned that was one of the things or one of the my design goals with fat right was to make people pay more oh shit sorry yeah my bad i just i actually I broke my it. pick on your head <laughs> Do you need another one? I've got several on me. <laughs> no, I'm going to make some more. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it was one of the reasons for fat was that it it actually acts as somewhat of a, a training mechanism to make you aware of what the food values are for different items. Mm -hmm. um, because it kind of forces you to keep track. Like, if you're constantly overeating, well, you're going to get fat. Right. <laughs> right? I, so... I recently saw the new mo the uh, fat models for the first time, and they are hilarious. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah, that was a bit tricky to get working, actually, because of the way uh, the way the character models work in, in Minecraft. So I had to uh, I had to futz with that a bit to make it look well, look decent. Found a cave. <laughs> oh, excellent. Yep. See some coal and iron already, which is nice. And it is full of zombies. No! <laughs> yeah, I can't remember if it was in an episode or on a stream, but I was just cracking up. It was good stuff. Oh, based on the fat models? Yes, yeah. like, I, I still, like, I'm thinking about it and just chuckling a little here. <laughs> uh, like, it was almost as amusing as uh, when it was originally implemented, I got myself obese and had to ride around on a pig. <laughs> <laughs> uh, phenomenal stuff. Okay, so we got this cave here. Yup. Uh... Wait, is this this is slightly deeper strata, isn't it? Yep, it's uh, right at the level that we can mine. Okay, I'm opening it up. Okay. There's some coal right here. I'm real scared, real scared. Oh, I put down uh, just just an FYI, I put down wood slabs there so we wouldn't get the uh, movement penalty for dirt going up and down. Oh, yeah, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> Because, yeah, dirt slabs are great for building yourself kind of temporary ramps. Mm -hmm. But if it's a well-traveled route, then or one that you plan to travel a lot, then it's actually worth it to, to lay down other materials. Yeah, I haven't even thought about, like, the implications of that. <laughs> like it. Uh, okay, so this is a pretty scary little area. I'm out of torches. I'm going to take some time to dig some of this coal. I have here. three more. I'll, I'll protect you while you do that. <laughs> Um, you're on your own. I gotta go make more axes. No worries. Okay. So this is, uh, I believe, more progress than we made last time, so... Yeah, way more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got separated so early on. Yup. No bug testing this time. <laughs> no, no, I'll avoid that. Well, what was it? I got nailed by that again last week. Somebody somebody reported something, and I decided to try to verify it, and I got myself killed and threw, me, threw myself into, like, a four-hour respawn cycle. Because, <laughs> <laughs> of course, I managed I managed to respawn in one of the few locations that I had never been to before oh, in, of course, in my of world. Course. <laughs> it was just a huge dump. Oh, it was Enderman. Somebody was thinking right, that right. I remember they that. weren't ganging up on you or something, so I decided to check and rapidly found out, found out <laughs> oh yeah, it's working just great. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, like, Hardcore Spawn, like, the more I play, the less of a... The less it's affecting me, and I really enjoy that. Yeah, it's, well, it's that's nice the idea, to feel right? that it's... progress, like... Upon death, yeah. it's a nice pick me up once you've died to feel that you're still making progress. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude, it's daylight if you want to oh, do nice. some hunting. Yeah, that's probably a good call. Keep the food reserves high. Uh, although I hear a skeleton rattling about, so be careful when you exit. And there we go. 
Hmm. Okay. Let's say the top of her house looks like either a shoe, like crazy elf shoe, or some Dr. Seuss style thing. It's uh, excellent. It's very interesting. I, think, I could dig some Dr. Seuss. Yep. Yep. Uh, so I am ridiculously excited for Return to Home. Like I misread um, <laughs> one of your posts on the forums where you're talking about KS, uh, Kerbal Space Program. Okay. And you were talking about mods in Kerbal Space Program. And I believe right, you were right, saying right. that you were going to start putting mods in your game. Okay, right. And I misunderstood that as you saying you were going, you were going to start working on a mod for KSP. Okay. And I was just like, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, no, I might. Oh, okay. It's not going to be anything on the scale of Better Than Wolves. Like, I'm talking about a very small thing. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. <laughs> just because I play I play a lot of KSP. Like, it's it's absolutely one of my favorite games. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm kind of so disappointed with the direction that they took with the campaign mode that... I've been holding off playing I'm... it until campaign mode comes out. I was largely doing the same thing, man. Like I, I had restricted myself to, um, to the Mun and Minmus in all my play because I didn't want to spoil campaign mode. Right, right. Um, and anyway, I've yet to try. Well, oh, that's right. I, I just noticed while we, while we we're working on this that the point uh, two two has come out now. Oh, really? Excellent. So yeah, the the campaign mode as they did it is is now released. <laughs> I will have to check that out later. Uh, yeah, I, I'll probably play tonight, but just from what I've I've been seeing of of um, their various announcements about campaign mode, that I know it's going to be disappointing at least for me. Gotcha. Like it really isn't what I was looking for. Like the way they seem to be approaching it is as a tutorial mm -hmm. for new players. Oh, and I was really going to. Oh no! I am staying the hell away from her. Please do. <laughs> oh, in a witch hut. Oh, don't do it. I'm man. not going to. Oh, no, no, no. Absolutely not. <laughs> she's just <laughs> like, do not. she's sitting right outside the hut, hut just staring at me like... Almost... And there's probably there's probably two more of them around somewhere, so be careful. Ah, that I did not know. Thank you for the heads up. Yep. She's also standing near several pigs and sheep I was going to kill. Yeah, get away from there, dude. Yep. <laughs> there, there may be witches in little caves or whatever. Like, It's a bad scene. You don't want to be going near witch huts. Let's leave. Okay. Leaving, and I'm just going to deal with this birch I found. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like getting it this... Sorry. I, yeah, there are basically I three witches sure, that live in each hut. I was now. pretty sure I just heard a spider, but I believe I was wrong. Because I'm kind of like in a small strip of uh, forest with witches on one side and a jungle on the other. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's not really a good scene. I think I'm gonna say screw this birch and I'm leaving. You found birch? Yes, I found some birch. Oh god damn it! <laughs> Seventeen of it. Did did you get a sapling out of it? Uh, not yet. Let me poke back to the ones I chopped down. And there is. Don't get yourself killed for it. Oh no! It would be very. Wow! Nice. I found a giant cave over here. I'm just gonna walk away from that. As tempting as it is to go down there. <laughs> I think you're getting into the um, the, uh, the better than wolves mindset Finally. now, where dis discretion is the better part of valor. <laughs> it, it took me long enough, but uh, <laughs> I will bravely run away from anything nowadays. <laughs> well, it really is such a huge adjustment for people over vanilla. Like it's it's so hard to die in vanilla, but better than wolves, if you if you make a mistake, there's a good chance it's going to kill you. Right, right. I was actually talking about that in my newest episode. And, like, the thing that I love about it is it's always your fault. Like, once... Uh, that's what I try for, Once yeah. the drop creepers were taken out, I uh, can't think of a time when I've died where it's not like, oh, I could have avoided this. The only the only one that's still lingering, which I plan to address, um, is your initial spawn in the nether. When you first come through a portal, mm -hmm. it's 99% of the time you, you have enough time to build yourself a shelter. Um, but there is a small random chance that like a gas could spawn and like start nuking you immediately. Ah. Um, so that's kind of the last, the last remaining one that's, yeah, believe, that's bugging me. I believe me I've where... had that happen in, in vanilla, but it's like harder to notice there because 
it doesn't well I, I i made adjustments for that already like when i introduced the um the hardcore nether aspect mm -hmm. um i changed gas spawning behavior to pre uh, prevent that so yeah it happens nowhere close to how it does oh i just see a witch as well uh you, mm. are you near a jungle as well Although we're surrounded by jungle stuff. Oh, that is true, that is true. <laughs> we're always near a jungle. Ooh, yes. But I don't see a witch hut. Oh, I just man. had a flaming zombie hit a cow, so I'm like, oh, I didn't die. So I'm going to get some free uh, <laughs> cooked beef out of that. Oh, shit, I think the witch locked onto me. Uh, oh, boy. I see something oh, run away. happening over here. Run away. Witch related. No, uh, no. okay. It de -aggered. Was it in the water? Yeah, we, it's in the water. Okay, yeah. yeah, we're staring at the same witch. I'm gonna go take a wide path around and come home since I didn't bring any extra. Ooh, cow! I'm gonna kill this cow, then take a wide path around. It may and go be home. the same cow I just spotted too. Hanging out in the forest. Uh, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> there are trees. Excellent. Nearby. Excellent. <laughs> well, I'm nope, I'm wailing nope. on it, so I don't think. Not witch. Oh, no. Spider. And an ocelot. Okay, so... I... I think this witch might not be associated with a witch hut, actually. I think this might be a different one that just, uh... It's... That just spawned. Not in a good place. Down the... Oh, no, there is the witch hut. Actually, no, there is a witch hut. Do you hut. have okay. any food on you? Uh, I've got quite a bit, yeah. Ah, okay. I, I'm heading back to the base now. Ah. I am going to have to start eating. You don't see me, do you? No, I'm going to have to start eating raw food or I'm going to die. Okay, because I, I don't think we're, we're in the same location at all. I'm crippled, and I'm kind of slowly swimming no. back. I got attacked by a spider. It happened to wander a bit outside the jungle. Okay, I'll try to find you, man, because that's, that's not good. It isn't good. <sighs> yep. If I can get, like, one bit of food that doesn't poison me, I should be alright. Uh, don't go swimming, eh? <laughs> you, you know that. I'm in one tall water, because it's a little bit okay, further from the jungle. don't go deeper. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> ah, every every bit of food I'm I'm eating is just giving me... I'm getting the worst, worst luck with food poisoning. Man. Um, what direction is the sun in from where you're heading? Um, is, it, is it ahead of you? I do not see it. I think it might be. Yeah, I'm standing on the roof of our of our hut. Okay. Trying to I'm just spot you. Work oh wait, I have mushrooms. Completely forgot I there have mushrooms. Go. Excellent. Mushrooms may save my life here. Okay. So I need to heal at least a tiny bit so I can jump out of this water now. I just was not about to walk next to that jungle. There's a witch in the jungle. That's uh -oh. that's just evil. <laughs> I just saw her like walking around near a tree. I'm, I'm a good distance from her, but that was that's just evil. I'm gonna run a perimeter around our base to see if I could spot you. I really hope this witch isn't aggroed on me. I don't think it is. Okay, yeah, I'm good. Hmm. Oh, cool. I have dirt slabs. Sweet. I can slowly make my way back. Man, where are you? I'm a decent distance off. Okay, because the sun is getting dangerously low. Oh. You might have to dig into a hole in the ground for the night. Yeah, I might have to. We'll, we'll see what, how this goes. If I can just heal, like, one little bit. What level of food do you need to be at to heal? Um, anything above package. So basically, no status penalty. Ah. I'm not sure how many shanks that is, and I'm crippled, so it's being overridden. Oh, right. Yeah, I've been meet I've been meaning to, uh, to allow the display of both at once. Because there are situations like that that come <laughs> up where you need to know. Ah, <coughs> uh, what is it? I think it's, uh, six. Ah. Okay. I'm at three and a half. <laughs> Subsiding on scrounged mushrooms. Man, I really cannot find you. Um, I've gone like full circle around the base at about 100 meters and don't see you. Okay, I see the sun now. Um, I need to get back to the base myself. Yeah, I'm going to have to dig into a hole to dig for the in. night. 
Maybe it would be a good time to take a little break. Huh? Uh, yeah, yeah. Let me get dug into a hole so I'm safe for the night, and then uh, that sounds good. Okay. Um. Let's see. <laughs> Navigating swamps is really nerve-wracking at dusk because of all the water, man. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This is a fairly harrowing situation. Okay, cool. <laughs> I am now safely in a tiny little hole. Feeling yeah, and I'm okay. safely back at our base. Although I think I'll say, seal up the stairwell here just in case. Sounds good. And I do have... Let's see if I have enough wood on me. I have enough wood and picks that I can actually make myself a furnace. And I'll be able to eat oh, cool. overnight. So that should fix the Excellent. problem. But yeah, we're going to go ahead and take a break. Um, this will be the end of the episode for you guys. And stay tuned for more.